Hello and welcome back to the Open Doors Week. We are here with another student discussion. My name is Vincent and I will be moderating this discussion we have with two of our business management students. Um, so now I am joined here by Betul and Katerina. Uh, thank you two for joining us so much today. Um, if you'd like to introduce yourselves very briefly, uh, Katerina, if you'd like to start. Sure. So, hi everyone. My name is Katerina. I'm from Ukraine. I uh, completed a uh, master's in innovation and technology management in summer 2021, and I'm currently continuing my education at the university in the PhD program of computer science. All right. Thank you, and thank you so much for being here. And uh, Betul, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm studying in the second year of um, University of Tartu Parni College, uh, wellness, uh, briefly, well spa business management department, master's program. So everything is great uh, for now till now, and I wish you a great event. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Betula, the first question I want to ask you is, uh, how do you like living in Parnu? Uh, not many. There's a, kind of a smaller faculty there. So I wanted to ask what your opinion is of uh, living over there in Parnu. Um, I came from a city that has a population of uh, nearly 3 million people residing. So um, even if I were living in Tallinn, uh, the things will be very different for me. You know, but um, I think it depends on the personality, because if you're a natural person, you know, if you're looking for peace and a slow city living, so Parnu will meet all the conditions here, because also, also it is very beneficial for you to uh, concentrate on your um, course and your lectures, because you have uh, not much thing to do, you know, if you're not um, motivating yourself to do some, you know, uh, extra things with your friends. Um, so out of COVID, maybe we can say. Uh, so you have to concentrate on your lessons and you will have a very good performance on the partner college then, yeah. Okay, awesome. And uh, Katerina, you, uh, you're in Tartu, correct? Uh, well, right now not, but, right now, uh, not, but it's with me, as you can see. Over yes. There. <laughs> but uh, what is your experience uh, living in Tartu or um, being in the university? How have you uh, enjoyed your time at the University of Tartu? Uh, well, living in Tartu is uh, is actually my experience is a bit similar to the tools because before coming to Tartu, I lived in Kiev, where we have also around 3 million people. Um, and uh, to be honest, um, few days before actually arriving in Tartu, I remember myself thinking that how am I going to do that because Tartu is, is so small and uh, I mean for, for me 90,000 people is really small after the locations where I lived before and I was thinking to myself that it's some kind of village with nothing, maybe I don't know, no infrastructure, no whatever uh, but uh, the first, very first day when I was still on the bus arriving to Tartu, my opinion already changed completely. I remember how surprised I was when I was just going with the bus to the bus station. It was also a very sunny day and I saw a lot of people on the streets walking around, having fun. There were these um, great summer terraces of restaurants, uh, beautiful um, pathways with flowers and everything. And uh, my first impression was very good indeed. And um, after, I don't know, after maybe two or three weeks, I already felt like home because the city has absolutely everything to offer. Um, probably after living there after a few months you can get a bit bored because you've kind of been to all the places but um, Tartu is not the only place in Estonia and you have plenty around to go visit as well um, so for now it's already been two and a half years since I live in Tartu and I feel very very comfortable there and um, yeah I, I don't know what else to add there is really everything that, that you need and um, um, it's, it's, it's very comfortable as for students. Yes, I, I agree as well. Um, so do you think you could tell us a little bit about your program and, um, maybe some tips or tricks that you might want to give to prospective students looking to join your specific program? 
Uh, sure. So my program is Innovation and Technology Management. It is coordinated by the School of Economics and Business Administration, but half of the courses in the program um, are given by the School of Economics and Business Administration, and another half is by Institute of Computer Science. Um, I am not sure what is the uh, proportion in ECTS, but um, I think it's half and half roughly uh, you can also choose whether you want to write your thesis at the school of economics and business administration so that it will be more focused on the innovation management part of the program or you want to join um, you want to find some supervisor at the institute of computer science and therefore it will be more focused on computer science part um, uh, yeah, we don't have many um, optional courses or electives. It's pretty much preset, at least in the curriculum that I was following two years ago. Maybe now something changes. But uh, what I like about the curriculum is that it's really balanced in a sense. So as I said, it's uh, first of all from two schools, from two institutes of the university. Um, and the courses as well are very balanced. So um, if you are a more technical person looking for some... Um, um, education in management or in, in you are interested in innovation management specifically this is for you if you are more already in economics or innovation management but you want to have some grasp of the technical side this is also for you uh, there is absolutely no um there are no courses where you have to be like hardcore programmer or no courses where you have to be hardcore economist it's very balanced um, and uh, yeah after two years you get pretty good understanding of the both um, parts of it both of innovation management and of a more technical side with uh, where we focus on uh, digital business analysis and product management and you get a chance what I, what I really like about it is that after getting to know both sides kind of as I said you can choose which one you want to pursue for your thesis so pretty much the last semester unless you take some courses you can just focus on one part and uh, explore it in more detail and maybe continue with it later yeah awesome thank you and uh Betel, the same question to you um do you think you could tell us a little bit about uh your program and maybe some things that you like um about the program okay um our program name is um wellness spa design and service management so basically our program focuses on business management and uh, spa service design deeply in a deeply focus so um when uh, you are when you are um, having a learning in this program you can uh, progress yourself into the business uh, into the modern business uh, nowadays you know what is business people are doing right now what the tools are they are using you know uh, what is expected from the um, graduate graduates from this area so you are uh, learning everything with, a, with an update um, with, a, with an update um, uh, education updated education and uh, um, like um, Katerina said that uh, there is two focus in the program uh, you can uh, focus, but mostly our programs uh, lectures are set preset before, and there is some little uh, optional courses. And our lecturers are very competent in their areas. I can say most of them are very competent in their areas, and we have also some lecturers from other countries around Europe and Ireland also, for example. And uh, you can write thesis when you want to graduate or you can uh, do a case study as well as uh, thesis and case study more focuses on a business segment of the area. So um, I think this program um, fits to anyone that who wants to um, progress themselves in a business management about wellness and spa and also designing the spas or just uh, to start a new career and reskilling themselves in spas you know uh, it is very helpful for learning from zero to um, hundred uh, so uh, this is not a complementary master's program this is uh, teaching you uh, the educations from zero to hundred so uh, this program is also good for reskilling re as well Thanks. all right awesome yeah and uh, 
kind of going off that, uh, I wanted to ask you guys what your your personal plans are for once you do finish your uh, your degree and your studies at the University of Tartu. Um, if, Katerina, if you'd like to start. Uh, yeah, so as I said, I kind of already finished the master's program and now I just started PhD. I'm in second semester right now, so I still have a long way to go. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I'm uh, basically staying in academia for now. I'm not sure what I'm going to do after because, um, because as I said, there is still quite a quite a way to go. Uh, but um, I can say for sure that with the master's program that I just completed and also with the PhD program that I'm doing, uh, I have plenty of options. I'm not limited to one thing. I am not limited to one tiny area where there is um, not that many offers or anything. Um, the program, the master's program that I completed really does offer a lot of um, areas to kind of try yourself in. And uh, they are not, um, how to say, they are not, um, hmm. it's not like you have to focus only in one. Um, you kind of get the idea about other ones, but it's not very uh, abstract. You get quite a good idea. So if you go into some even starter junior job, you can quickly learn it in more detail already on the job because already the, a lot of theoretical part you know from just completing your courses and uh, writing a master thesis. Um, I myself am particularly interested in uh, product management, for example, and um, uh, but after the completing the program, you could also as well go work as a business analyst or you could go work as a data analyst and completely, I don't know, continue with um, data analysis, coding a bit things if you fancy. Um, uh, yeah, but personally, I don't know yet. For now, my focus is to <laughs> finish the PhD and then I will see. No, yeah, that's great. It sounds like you have a lot of options and wide array of stuff you can actually do with the skills that you've gained. Okay. Uh, Betul, uh, what would you say are your, uh, your personal plans once you finish your education? Yeah. And I'm in the second uh, year in the second term of my program. So uh, this is the thesis or the case study time. So I choose case study over the thesis because I don't expect an academic uh, career or any doctoral education after this. So I'm on the more business side. And uh, I think uh, when I finish the program, I will look into the um, wellness centers or spas where I can um, work peacefully and have a regular job uh, with uh, happy people around uh, in Estonia, of course, mm -hmm. uh, because um, I want to get more knowledge about these uh, people, uh, about Estonian people and Estonian culture, because um, I have uh, gained the knowledge about the history of Estonia and uh, how these Estonian people have renewed and rebuilt their countries and their societies. Uh, so. In my eyes, um, your society and your people is like a hero, individual heroes, one by one. So I want to get uh, more of this knowledge and I want to get to learn deeply and be a part of this society to um, have this journey. Uh, so I will look into stay in Estonia and have a job here, in, especially in Pernu maybe, because um, there is a lot of um, spas and thermal springs and also, um, you know, the famous uh, smoke sauna of Estonia. So you have a culture of a uh, very long time, a history about this. So uh, this is an opportunity for me to uh, educate myself furthermore. So that's basically is this. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And I mean, uh, you mentioned kind of the culture and language in Estonia. Have you faced any, uh, especially being in Parnu, a little bit of a smaller town, have you faced any cultural barriers uh, with Estonian people or language barriers in specific? Um, mostly the young people uh, under 40 age speaks uh, English very well. But for to be kind and courtesy, you know, uh, courteous, uh, I'm trying to speak Estonian when I'm starting a conversation. Uh, but 
when I say I'm just I just know a little bit Estonian, so they are very helpful for helpful for me too. You know, they're just uh, speaking English with me and uh, helpful on any occasion. Um, I just had one more hard, um, hardness on uh, Estonia. Finding an apartment wasn't an easy task here, but but I think. Uh, um, Till I learned uh, what how it, the things are going on here, uh, it's not also not easy for Estonian people too. The landlords are very picky <laughs> when they are looking for tenants, so it's yeah. not a very foreigner specific thing. Yeah. So everything goes well, I think, according to culture. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe because I'm from Turkey, I didn't mention it at the beginning. I'm sorry. Um, we have a very um, rich culture on food. I had little uh, problem about food also, but um, this is not my first comfort area or not my first aim. My main target is to have education and be a much more intellectual person. So this comes um, after the, the education. Yeah, and the foods are coming after this. Yeah, I mean. definitely. And uh, Katerina, have you had any uh, any kind of cultural shock, or was there one thing that specifically shocked you when you first came to Estonia, or maybe something that's been prevalent from the time you've lived in Estonia? Um, culture shocks, I wouldn't say so, because uh, my culture and Estonian culture are not all that different. Um, I think I can understand Estonians quite well, of course. Um, the a bit of coldness and shyness is is not a myth. Let's say it 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 does happen to Estonians, but uh, I have a lot of friends who are very open and friendly and cheerful, and not just when you get to know them, but also from from the first uh, impression as well. Um, when you were just asking this question, I don't know why, but the first thing that came to my mind was uh, disc golf. And I don't know if, if our listeners know what it is. It's uh, kind of like a very special to Estonian sport um, where you have um, a disc, basically, and you try to throw it into a basket from, from different um, um distances and you do it in places like even i don't know middle of the forest and for and um box and everything uh, i tried it uh, two three times i don't know and um it's it's an interesting experience it's something that i haven't heard before um and um i think this was one of the things that also kind of got me a bit closer to to the estonian culture as well as hiking and forests of course on frozen lakes and everywhere uh, but I think this is one of the most memorable things, definitely, this no, getting to know what disc golf is in the first place and trying it out for myself as well. No, yeah, I, I am a, I'm a fan of disc golf as well. So, <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're, we're running a little short on time here, guys. Is there anything maybe you'd like to say to prospective students, maybe a little short quip that you'd like to say to people thinking about joining uh, your programs before we end it off? If Katerina, you'd like to start. Um, sure. I definitely want to just say if you have some doubts um, about the program, you have some doubts about Tartu or Estonia, uh, you shouldn't. You should just go ahead with it and apply. I did have my doubts as well before, before coming here, um, especially connected to that the country is so small and um, uh, yeah, the language as well, but um, as the tool also said, and I also want to point out as well, the education here is great and it, it, it definitely tops up everything like um, maybe, well, not maybe, you definitely will feel uncomfortable during the long nights in winter and you will have to get used to it. You might feel a bit uncomfortable with the language and everything, but the education is worth it, the university is worth it, and the international community is definitely worth it. You will not feel alone here um, if you come here not just because the university gives so much support because it does uh, but also because the international community is big and you will definitely find people from your country here and uh, you will be overwhelmed by how many of them there are here and you will have friends and uh, yeah as I said first and foremost you will have great education that will open a lot of doors for you in life all right thank you so much and uh, Betul uh, yourself do you have uh, something to say uh, kind in the same vein yeah just just a short maybe a short sentence um 
who wants to study in our program or the other programs in Tartu University, I think uh, they must be serious about uh, education because uh, this is a very um, serious university and you, you need to work hard. And for learning and carrying your knowledge, the new, new education and new knowledge will be helpful on your next stage of your life. I believe it will be very helpful. And also be open, be open to new cultures, be open to new journeys, be open to new tastes, new friendships. And you will be a global human, you know, you will be a world person then. Uh, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you too so much for joining us today and answering uh, some of our questions. Uh, that will do it for this student discussion round. Um, thank you so much for joining us, tuning in. Uh, we're going to have more programs to come and uh, another student discussion round later. So uh, please stay tuned and uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us again, you two. <laughs> thank, thank you. you.